What is up everyone? Welcome back to Debrex Garage. Today's video is going to be a pretty short one. Um, I just wanted to give you guys some news. Um, first off, in the last video, you guys kind of heard uh, a little bit about some of the things I've been going that that have been going on, you know, that I've been dealing with in my personal life. Um, thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart um, for all the comments. It really feels good to know that, you know, not only do you guys like watching our videos, but you know, you guys are really supportive as well. So for everyone that commented, uh, thank you so much. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. It's, um, it's a cool install video with nice carbon fiber part I have right here on the grill, but uh, also some personal information. But anyways, today's video is really exciting because I now have a second vehicle that's going to be on the channel. Um, this is going to be um, a daily driver, more or less. Um, it's going to be, you know, give me a lot of new utility that this car can't provide. Um, so let me get you guys set up on a tripod and just kind of talk about my thought process behind everything. So just a, a quick update based on some of the stuff I talked about in the last video. Um, I'm feeling a lot better right now. Um, I finally got onto a treatment plan that's going to be working for me and um, I'm starting to get back into exercising, getting back out there, rock climbing and going to the gym and hiking and everything like that. So overall feeling so much better than I was a couple weeks ago. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to start making more and more content for you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, but today's topic is the new car that I have. Um, so just so you guys kind of are aware of what has been going on in my head, um, this car, the WRX has been the, the staple of this channel for a very long time and it's going to stay that way because I know a lot of you guys really like the Subaru content, the racing content, all of that is going to stay. Um, I don't really know how much I'll actually feature this new car on the channel because I don't know really, I don't really know, you know, how much of you guys, how many of you guys want to see that kind of content. If you do leave a comment, but um, really the primary goal of this new car was to have a more comfortable daily driver um, that I can go on longer road trips with that I don't have to really worry about. With this car, obviously it is very reliable, but if I, if something happens with this car just from daily driving, if I'm on the side of the road and another coolant hose pops off or something like that, right? It's lowered. I have a lot more expensive parts on this car that I don't want to be damaged. Um, if I have to get a tow truck, it's probably gonna tear up the front lip and the front bumper because of how low it is. Um, there's just a lot of different aspects where I want to keep this car more pristine and start putting more miles on something else. The second part of this was um, when I do take this car to the track, I needed a vehicle that was capable of towing this car on a trailer to and from the track. Um, there was a lot of you know nerves uh, around um, taking this car to the track, and you know in the back of my head I was always you know in the back of the head even pushing on the track. I'm like, what happens if I get a flat tire? You know what if I tear a uh, uh, you know tear a tire off hitting a curb too hard. What happens if uh, my transmission goes out? What happens if I blow the motor, right? If any of these things happened at the track, the only way for me to get this car back home safely would be to hire a tow truck. And that would be, you know, most of the tracks are, are an hour and a half to three to five hours away from where I live. So that would be thousands of dollars of towing fees. Um, and uh, I don't think insurance would really cover it too much, but, uh, or too much of it. But uh, that being said, if I have that support vehicle to tow this car to the track, I'll have to, I'll be able to really dial in and focus on everything that I want to do at the track and not have to worry about, you know, what if I push the car too hard? Um, it is reliable, but it's always good to have that, you know, that safety net. Um, and then the other part of it is, you know, if I'm driving around um, town when I'm at the track, you know, there's periods of time when I'm at these events where you have don't have a session and you want to go get lunch or maybe you want I want to go get more ethanol and all of that. Um, 
Having a support utility vehicle that'll be towing this and have storage capacity for all my tools, my gasoline, my ethanol, spare parts, you know, my jack, my jack stands. These are all things that, you know, wouldn't fit in this car. And I could even take a second set of wheels if I want, because I, I, I have three right now. Uh, I have the ones on the car, I have the track wheels right here on my right, and then uh, the, my winters over here. Um, so, Really all those things combined to lead me to say, okay, I think I need a truck. Um, I am a sustainability guy. That's what I do for work as a professional. Um, I work for a large corporation handling their sustainability program. Um, and personally, I do believe in, um, you know, every individual working their hardest to lower their carbon emissions. And a lot of you guys aren't gonna, <laughs> like me like hearing that but um i think with vehicles specifically you know i'm not a huge ev guy i think they're cool um they are the future unfortunately but um with the way our energy grid is set up right now personally i don't think it's ethical to get an electric vehicle yet unless you're in a certain state where you know the source of the electricity charging the car is renewable so um maybe in the future if I have my own house where I can put solar on the roof and charge my car directly, um, you know, there's a reason I stay catted. There's a reason I switched to ethanol. Ethanol does have a way lower, um, I think it's about 40% lower carbon emissions for per gallon compared to um, gasoline. And that's after, you know, that efficiency factor, but whatever. Um, so that in mind, you know, I do feel a little guilty, I guess you could say, about getting a truck, but um, I don't commute for work. I work from home, um, and the only driving I do is, uh, you know, on my own time. So I don't have these thousands of miles that I'm putting on any of my vehicles, um, driving to and from work every day or things like that. So, um, you know, with this car last year, I think I only put 6,000 miles, 7,000 miles on it. Um, so with the frame of reference for needing something strictly for that utility, you know, the only thing I could find that is capable of towing is, is uh, a truck. So um, that's what I got. Um, it's right behind my garage door. So let me do the reveal here. Um, keep in mind, guys, I am not made of money. <laughs> um, you know, I don't have uh, any family members that are paying for any of my bills. I don't have um, a huge amount of support in terms of you know college payments. My family helped a little bit, but you know I have student debt. I had this car to pay off, which I just did. Um, so everything that I have is really from the level of work that I've put into my own life. So um, that being said, it's not an expensive truck. It's not something brand new off the lot. Um, it is something that I found that was a great deal. It's in pretty good shape mechanically. Um, there are some things I have to work on uh, myself, which I'm completely fine with, but you know, everyone has a budget. And for my personal budget, this is probably one of the best options that I can find. So let's give you guys a review. So guys, this is my new daily driver. This is my 2014 Toyota Tundra SR5 TRD. Um, it came with 150,000 miles on it, which is relatively low for a truck this age. So that's awesome. Um, two previous owners in very dry states, one in Arizona, one in Colorado. So um, when I looked up the underbody, it kind of crawled around underneath the truck at the dealership um, or the, the car lot essentially um, to make sure everything was in good shape and everything is it's, it's incredible. Um, there's a nice layer of, of dirt on everything because the last owner probably lived on a dirt road or something like that. But um, yeah, I was actually really, really surprised with how everything looked. Let me put you guys on a tripod so my arm doesn't get tired here. All right, so 
what are some of the reasons I went with this truck over others? Um, I was looking at some of the GMC Sierras. Um, personally, I'm just not a really big fan of Chevy and Ram. Um, I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate in the comments. So it really came down to GMC, Toyota, and Ford. Um, for the price range I was looking at, um, it really had, you know, had limited options. I heard that the, um, you know, the up to 14, 2014 years for the Fords, uh, the XLTs, they weren't the, the most reliable. I think those are the 5.4 liter V8s. Um, the GMCs I really liked. I just couldn't find something that was specced out the way I wanted. Um, so some of, the, some of the things I did want had to have the towing capacity. It had to have a backup camera. Um, I didn't really care if it was a V6 or V8, but when we're looking at the older platforms, it's very rare to find um, a V6 truck that um, has that higher towing capacity. Um, so let me talk about the specs on this. So this is a 5.7 liter V8. Um, unfortunately, I, I couldn't find one that had the flex fuel kit on it. Um, there might be some kind of conversion um, I could do um, that might be pretty simple. I don't know. But um, this is the gasoline version, which is fine. Um, but yeah, it's a 5.7 liter. From everything that I've heard, all the research I've done, these cars just last so long. Um, they don't really have many mechanical issues. There's a couple things to watch out for here and there, like um, there's one gasket, so a bunch of people are like, make sure you check that. Um, I haven't noticed any leaks in the engine bay. Everything has been fine. Um, it is the double cab. So the second door, um, going into this, I really didn't want a huge truck. Um, I didn't want a double, uh, you know, a huge crew max cab or something like that. But I did want the, there to be a second row of seats that are, you know, large enough for people to be comfortable in so I can drive friends around and go on these camping trips and climbing trips into the canyons. Um, so this really met all of the requirements that I was looking for. It's mechanically sound. I took it on a, a, a pretty long test drive um, and then I drove it about two hours back home from where I picked it up from. And uh, <clears throat> mechanically, if we're talking about the powertrain, the engine, transmission, everything feels great. It actually drives really soft. Like I was really surprised, you know, the wheel doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't really feel like you're driving this huge car. Um, obviously, because it is larger than mine, it's taken some time for me driving around town to get used to, uh, you know, my uh, spatial awareness of where the sides of the car are, the front and the back and all of that. Um, that being said, all of those important things, suspension, mechanical, all of those are in amazing shape. There are some cosmetic things that, it's a used truck um, that I, will have to work on and fix. There's a couple dings, a couple dents, you know. Uh, there's some of the chrome trim that definitely needs some work. Um, not rust, but like, you know, just like, I forget, I, don't, I forget what it's called, but essentially that like discoloration you see on the top, you know, basically a tarnish or something like that, where you can, um, I should be able to compound it out with just some polishing and that'll be fine. Um, it did not come with a backup camera, it was missing. And I found out that the tailgate actually came from a different truck, which was funny, but uh, no biggie. Just ordered a, a backup camera, installed that. Um, I already upgraded the headlights and taillights with all LEDs. I did LED interior lights. Um, I did, um, I fully restored the front headlights. They were all foggy. So um, if you guys, I'll put the link actually to what I did. Um, the kit I used, it was the Turtle Wax version for the headlight restoration kit. Actually came out amazing. Let me take you guys off the tripod here and show you. So before, this was super cloudy and foggy and um, it took me about 10, 15 minutes to do both sides. It came out amazing. Um, I did swap these out to LED headlights. Um, this kit does come with the fog lights, which uh, weren't really foggy or whatever, um, but the light output from these two is gonna be good. Um, so little things here and there. I do want to de-chrome it. Um, 
I wanna change out the front grill to something a little bit better looking. I do wanna dechrome the bumpers. Um, I do need new tires, and I will talk to you guys a little bit about that because I need some advice later on. But overall, it is in great shape. So let's hop inside real quick. So here we are. Um, inside is actually pretty clean. Like I said, used truck, but pretty surprised with, um, you know, how nice it is. Um, I didn't really even, I haven't even uh, vacuumed everything yet, um, but it has been really nice to drive actually. It's very comfortable. Um, you Like like I said, it, it, it feels like driving a car. Um, these Toyotas really last a really long time and that's one of the reasons I got the Toyota. I also like, you know, the Japanese market, um, <clears throat> aftermarket parts for these Toyotas. Um, there's a huge, um, there's a huge market for aftermarket parts. OEM parts are really easy to find. You know, there's a good uh, selection of them. And uh, I know that this engine's probably gonna last to 300,000 miles if I take care of it well. Um, it does have four by four, uh, four low, four high for towing. It has a specific little stock here for towing. Um, I don't really know how to use that quite yet. Uh, let me see if you guys can actually see that. Uh, barely. This is tow haul here and there's like a plus minus a little button here. Um, so I don't really know how to use that yet or how it is used, but I'm sure I'll have to figure it out pretty soon here. I already got a phone mount. Um, on the interior, the, you know, the speakers are great. The AC works. I'm just looking for something sim. I was looking for something simple and um, just want everything to work the way they are uh, or with the way it's supposed to. So this model actually comes in two different cab styles. It comes with the double cab like this, which has like a full door on the back, but it is shortened. Um, uh, and instead of like, you know, the reverse opening door and some of the other smaller double cabs, um, but then it has the crew max where the back door is another two feet longer. So like I was saying, the, the back seat actually has quite a bit of room back here, even though it is the shorter one. Um, it is a standard, uh, cab, um, or I'm sorry, it's a standard bed. It's the six and a half feet. They have one, a short bed and a long bed, and this is right in the middle. So it's the normal one. Um, but if I get in here, the amount of leg room is about the same, maybe a little bit more than my Subaru, but the amount of headroom here, let me flip the camera around. There is a ton of headroom. So all of my friends, um, if they are coming through here uh, or sitting back here, they'll be comfortable and fine for longer road trips. The seats are really comfortable. Um, there's a lot of, you know, a, there's a couple of plugs back here for people to use. Um, so that's kind of the reason why I wanted and I went with this size cab instead of the big extended one because like I said, I don't want a big truck. If I could get one of the brand new tiny little Rangers with a with a tow package and the four by four and all of that, you know, that would be my dream because those actually have some decent towing capacity, but those ones, I think the brand new ones that have that higher towing capacity that are the smaller trucks, you know, they go for $50,000 or 45 or something like that brand new. All right. With the TRD package, it does come with uh, Bilstein shocks, which is really nice. Um, I may be looking at upgrading the, um, I'm putting some new um, suspension components in back here to reduce the amount of sag when I do tow. We can talk about that another time. Um, the TRD also comes with a couple other small goodies. Um, so the, the real TRD package, I think it was just specific spec wheels and tires, um, and then the shocks and the badging, um, the rear shocks, and then the rear and front shocks. And then we got this really nice TRD intake. Um, this is the big 5.7 liter. Um, like I said, it's actually really reliable and like super clean. Um, I don't think they even detailed the inside here, um, but there's not really a whole lot of corrosion. It was in a bunch of really dry states, which is awesome. And um, I'm just overall really, really happy with this. So obviously the majority of my budget is going to stay 
planted in my Subaru in the race car here. Um, there's still some work that I want to do on this. I may be doing an STI transmission swap, we'll see. But um, that being said, I might do some small things here and there with the Tundra. Um, cosmetically, I do want to switch over to new headlights. There's a um, there's one by this company called Spider. They make headlights and taillights that have a DRL that's similar to the C lights on here, which I think is kind of cool. Um, but I do want to switch over to the uh, projector style headlights. Um, these are just the normal reflectors and um, it's not really a fan of the beam cutoff. I want a nice sharp beam cutoff that you can get from projectors. So I'll be doing that. A couple cosmetic things here and there, de-chroming, new grill, new badges, um, and then maybe wheels, but definitely tires. I'm probably just gonna stick with the OEM wheels. But you know, a year from now, we're probably gonna buy new wheels, knowing me. Um, so with these wheels, these are 18 by eight. Um, so I, I kind of have a, a pretty good platform for doing whatever I want. Um, there is a ton of room in the fender well here uh, for doing whatever I want. Um, so the OEM size is 255.70. The ones that tires that these, uh, the last owner have on here are 275.65. Um, and the overall diameter is actually very, very similar um, to the 255.70s. So um, I kind of have a bunch of options. I could go a little bit bigger. Um, again, this is gonna be a daily driver. I'm not gonna be taking it off-road too much uh, or ever, uh, but I do wanna uh, have that towing capacity with those tires. So um, if anybody, any of you guys in the comments, uh, anybody watching has experience with these truck tires, uh, let me know. I'm kind of debating between sticking with this size, the 275.65, or maybe going a little bit taller, a little bit thinner with uh, 265.70s. So that's kind of the plan with that. But overall, I like it. A um, couple small little dings here and there I'll fix over time. Um, but really, this is a solid platform for me to be comfortable, to have the utility. Oh, I forgot to mention the towing capacity. 10,400 pounds. So if you look at the weight of my Subaru and then the weight of an open trailer, like a or u U-Haul rental trailer as, as an example, which I'll probably be using in the near future. Those two combined, I think are still, I think they're around 6,000 pounds. Um, and if I do get a trailer that I own later on that might be a little heavier, this is going to have plenty, plenty of towing capacity. So the question I have for you guys, if you made it this far in the video is, when I do m modifications, right? You know, little installs here and there, the new headlights, tail lights, suspension components, all of that. Do you guys wanna see that truck on the channel? And please be completely honest. If that's not your thing, leave a comment. If you're like, yeah, um, you want to see that, let me know. Just let me know in the comments. Um, also, let me know if you guys like the mustache. I've been bouncing back and forth between beard and mustache for a while. But uh, yeah, that's, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I have a package getting delivered from an amazing company that is going to be massive news for you guys because uh, it is a prototype part. It's coming today and I'm gonna be putting it on the car this weekend. Um, and the other great part about the truck is if that install, which is pretty in, in depth, uh, if it takes more than a couple days, it doesn't matter because I can just leave this on jack stands in my garage and drive the truck around if I have to. So um, that's amazing. Um, in the past, there was always that level of stress of like, you know, if I don't get this project finished on my car, I won't be able to drive it. I won't be able to go anywhere. So um, now I can kind of start doing these a little bit more in depth projects where um, if the car has to stay on jack stands for a couple of days or a week, it'll be fine. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, keep an eye out for that next video coming uh, this weekend, maybe Sunday or Monday. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Last little thing. Um, I've noticed that on YouTube, the notification bell for people receiving notifications about new videos uh, being posted, um, the YouTube by default will actually change the notification priority to something called like personalized, 
which basically means that I'll, they'll just suggest videos to you kind of randomly based on what other topics you're watching and clicking on. So um, if you guys want to see all the notifications of when we upload new videos, just change that no uh, notification bell from uh, personalized to all notifications. Um, we only post once or twice a week, so that'll mean only a couple notifications here and there, and it'll show up on your YouTube dashboard if you're subscribed. So um, just help us out. And if you guys wanna stay, um, you know, stay in contact with us and watch our videos, make sure you do that. Um, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. And uh, yeah, see you guys very, very soon. Hope you guys like this video. Peace.